Hello friends, last week in my video, I advocated that the markets were basically betting that the Israel war wasn't likely to escalate matters to a point where the markets needed to worry. They were betting on the fact that uh, uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu would have an upper hand and uh, basically the war would remain localized rather than uh, spread to the region. And sure enough, the headline indices rallied. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about something that I promised you on social media about why I feel commodities as hard assets are witnessing signs of A, pro-cyclicality and B, hysteresis. Now, both these are economic phenomena and this week onwards, I feel hysteresis is setting in and pro-cyclicality is something that I have been talking about since a couple of weeks now. Now, what is pro-cyclicality? Pro-cyclicality basically means that asset prices I'm talking particularly of commodities here. Asset prices tend to move in the same direction as the overall economy. The opposite of pro-cyclicality is counter-cyclicality. In counter-cyclicality, markets, uh, the economy could be going one way and uh, uh, markets could, market prices could be going the other way. So they are divergent. Look at what happened in COVID. Factories, shops and business establishments were shut, but markets were rising higher to the extent that lumber, lumber is nothing but chopped wood, went up 600%. Were trees running out of this world? No, they were not. But this was counter cyclicality and pro cyclicality in uh, the coming future would mean that since we are expecting the economy to cool down, I expect commodity prices also to cool down. Now, case in point is the weekly chart of copper on the COMEX. Why am I talking about copper? Because copper is known as the most reliable barometer of the economy in uh, uh, commodity markets because uh, 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 this is used in every industry conceivable. And if copper demand is falling, which is why the prices are falling, you're basically looking at economic activity cooling off a little bit. Now, what is hysteresis? Does it have anything to do with hysteria? No, I'm not talking about hysteria from uh, uh, the psychologist's point of view. I'm talking about a phenomena uh, uh, in, uh, uh, say, quantum physics, say, uh, kinetic energy, for example, let me break this down for you in very simple terms. Your car stops suddenly and you realize that you need to push start it, put it into second gear and probably try your hand and see if the car starts, the engine starts again. You know what is the most difficult thing to do? It is to start pushing the car from a completely stationary uh, uh, position and then get momentum going which becomes easier. So initially you might require three or four people to push your car. But once it starts going into motion, probably three and as it gets faster, probably two people will be required to keep pushing it. And then, hey, suddenly you put it into gear, let go of the clutch and your engine starts. So hysteresis is when initially the prices of any asset go into a particular direction. It takes a lot of buying and selling to uh, set the ball rolling in a long trend up or down either direction. And then slowly but surely momentum catches on. What I am seeing on uh, copper, uh, see that on your uh, screen all over again. What you're seeing is lower tops, lower bottoms and now the decline basically gaining momentum. So A, you have pro-cyclicality, B, you have uh, hysteresis being seen in prices and what you will ask me is the way forward. Is there a plan of action here? Can we actually make money out of it? Yes, you can. As a matter of fact, on uh, uh, 9th of November 2023, I put up a very, very detailed post on our free Telegram channel and there is an uh, absolute uh, 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 detailed foolproof 
blueprint that I have formulated for myself as a trader and a, uh, a prop trader. And you, if you wish to, can actually uh, make use of that and see if it suits your temperament. I think that I can come out with a net worth higher after pro cyclicality has set in and gone as compared to my net worth today. At least that is my belief in my statistical trading models. Time will tell. Friends, the other aspect that uh, lends uh, credibility to my theory that uh, uh, pro cyclical hysteresis will be seen in prices is the downgrade by Moody's of the US economy. Now, that is something you were not prepared for. That is not something that an average rank and file trader was anticipating. That tells you that uh, there are concerns out there. Remember this video that I have recorded uh, a couple of months ago. The hyperlink is in the description and the pinned comment where I elaborated upon the six threats to the US banking system. Student loans, auto loans, housing loans, uh, uh, personal loans and uh, credit card debt. And I, I express concerns that uh, we could basically be uh, witnessing a pressure from the US because the US is uh, the biggest influencer of global markets. And the US is now, the US government rather, is now borrowing at a very accelerated pace. They intend to borrow 1.5 trillion US dollars over the coming two quarters. And imagine the interest payments on this debt when interest rates are rising, which is why I think my theory of pro cyclical hysteriasis in prices just got another boost and we are preparing our systems for it. Now let's for go forward to what we do uh, in our regular weekly videos. On your screen right now is the market roundup window, which tells you that it was a bank nifty, which rallied uh, uh, higher than uh, the nifty 50. Although the uh, relative comparison basis, you, you can see the small inset box there. The nifty performance over 4, 12 and 20 weeks remains far better than the bank nifty. The US dollar index, the Dixie, continued to rise and that pressurized gold, silver, crude and natural gas prices. I think uh, our, our systems, uh, both uh, uh, the behavioral one um, uh, called Barracuda and the statistical one called Ibex deserve a big, big uh, 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 thumping applause for having called out uh, bearishness, which I even stated in my uh, 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 end of the video last week in my trading blueprint segment. So oil and gas falling should not have come as a surprise to you if you were following me for long enough. The 10 year benchmark bond yield fell two basis points, which means the bond prices rose up, which is what boosted the bank nifty sentiments. The NSE market capitalization rose yet again, and that tells you that the rally was broad based. Remember, I told you in my previous week's video that I think the market is giving thumbs up to the war going in the favor of Israel. MWPL continued to rise, which is routine, and the US markets were all three indices were up, which provided tailwinds to our Indian markets. It was the technology laden NASDAQ which led the way forward. Friends, I now come to our in house uh, 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 indicator starting with MWPL. Now, the MWPL has gone to 36.42, and uh, two weeks after expiry at 36.42, it is the lowest after four months. That tells you that even though traders were raising their uh, exposure levels, but they were not half as gung ho as they were four to five months ago. Not very surprising. A, you have a war. B, you are seeing asset prices going nowhere really. If you compare uh, uh, what the indices are doing, what they have returned is check that inset box. You will see what I mean. I now come to the turnover where uh, uh, you're basically seeing stock futures and index futures turnover. The stock futures turnover were more or less stagnant, but the index futures turnover actually fell. Now, futures turnover falling is not exactly great news because uh, futures require higher capital uh, involvement. And if turnover is falling there, 
That means traders are not willing to commit bigger sums of money. Let's watch it in the coming week again. The next in line is the advanced decline ratio, which is the average of all five trading sessions of last week. Advanced decline ratio fell even though the Nifty gained 1.01% on a week on week basis. At 1.23, it is noticeably lower than the prior week's 1.38, which means for every 100 falling shares, there were 123 rising shares last week. We need to watch the advanced decline ratio. This is a metric that I put up post market every day on my social media accounts. Do join me there. I now come to the prompt futures basis. What is basis? It's the discount or premium prevalent on the futures compared to spot. The basis across both the indices fell noticeably. Number one, basis tends to shrink as expiry comes closer because traders have fewer days to uh, close their trades. Secondly, it is also a good uh, proxy for risk appetite. Risk appetite was lower and therefore basis contracted. This is another metric which I update on my social media accounts. Friends, I now come to impetus, which is our exclusive in-house indicator. You won't find it anywhere on the internet. And uh, the impetus rose for both the indices, which tells you that the rally in the Nifty and the Bank Nifty was accompanied by higher buying, forceful buying and momentum, which is advantage bulls. I now come to the last indicator yet again, the uh, exclusive in-house indicator called lift weight thrust drag or LWTD. And this is something you've trusted implicitly since almost two years now. Now, what you are seeing is uh, uh, that uh, uh, the index might have gained 1.01%, but the LWTD has come down to 0.04 as compared to the prior week 0.13. That tells me that fresh buying may be lethargic. Short covering, sure, short covering can come, but fresh buying may be a little milder. A couple of uh, reasons why. A, it's a festive season. Markets are, are likely to witness holidays ahead. And therefore, fresh buying might be a little for uh, might be a little uh, uh, elusive. And secondly, what you are seeing is that prices are not jumping fast enough for bulls to continue to throw in fresh money. Friends, our in-house indicators done. I now come to the banking segment, which uh, you know is very close to my heart. The uh, uh, Indian ten-year benchmark bond yield has eased a little bit. Prices are back below the falling trend line and at uh, 25 week exponential moving 20 week exponential moving average which is a five month long uh, uh, holding on cost of uh, an average uh, bond holder seeking yields what we are basically seeing is we are in no man's land neither are we kissing uh, seven percent where we start to uh, uh, basically get into guilt funds uh, nor are we uh, actually uh, above 7.50, 7.60, where we start to ladder yields? Friends, the bond market's done. I now come to the bank Nifty, which rose more than uh, the Nifty 50 in relative comparison. And uh, it gained 1.16% and rallied on four out of five trading sessions, as you can see on the daily chart on your screen. The head and shoulder neckline, which has been indicated as a blue upward sloping trend line, has, uh, 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 is now within a kissing distance and the price falling below the neckline and coming back to test it is very common in head and shoulders pattern. Whether the price breaks out above the neckline and trades sustainably above it will determine whether the head and shoulder is negated and the price basically starts to rally higher. The price is also above a month long moving average, which has fallen and then flattened now. So what I feel is that a sustained trade above 44,250 or 44,350 odd levels should embolden the bulls to take bigger long positions. Coming now to the weekly chart, what we are seeing is a smaller candle compared to the prior week's uh, 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 relatively larger bullish candle. But the price is still contained within uh, uh, the large red candle formed three weeks ago. It is only once the price is above the large candles high 
that uh, you would say that the selling has been absorbed. Note also that the price is above uh, uh, marginally below its uh, 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull, which means the medium term buy and hold investor is still underwater in losses. The bullish wedge formation has still uh, 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 not been uh, uh, negated. Price is still below the downward, uh, uh, the lower uh, uh, trend line and uh, we've closed uh, uh, marginally lower than this. We need to get back in the wedge if you were to negate the wedge for now. Friends, in uh, the week before last, this index was number two on the most volatile counters list on our statistical beta rankings in-house. It rose by one notch to number three. Not just because volatility came down, it did. The intra-week uh, 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 ranges were smaller, but individual stock volatility rose faster than the bank nifty. Last week, I advocated an anticipated range between 44,450 on the upside and 42,200 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I expect an anticipated range between uh, 44,900 on the upside and 42,725 on the downside. The ranges appear a little contracted because the base effect was smaller of the previous week. Friends also watch our daily, weekly and monthly pivot points on uh, the indices for better uh, trading uh, uh, signals, whether you're uh, a futures or an options trader, options buyer, options seller, swing trader, etc. Do uh, uh, take advantage of that feature from us. Friends, the bank nifty done. I now come to the nifty 50, which uh, uh, basically uh, uh, rose less than the nifty bank nifty in comparison and it gained on three out of five trading sessions as compared to the bank nifty's four out of five sessions the price is marginally above its um, month-long moving average which has fallen but now flattened off late we basically need to have a breakout above 19,600 levels if the bulls were to get bolder negate the selling pressure the 19224 flag formation low is still holding and as an established uh, 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 swing pivot uh, uh, low for now and that will now be a support area in case of declines friends let's go and take a look at the weekly chart here just like the bank nifty you are seeing a smaller bullish candle as compared to the prior week's relatively bigger bullish candle. But both these bullish candles are contained within uh, the bearish candle three weeks ago. And the high of that candle is 19,557, which is why I said a breakout above 19,600 is needed for the bulls to get back in control. The price is above its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull. The average itself is pointed higher. So relatively speaking, the bank nifty, uh, the, the nifty 50, I'm sorry, is relatively stronger than the bank nifty. That inset box tells you that the performance of the nifty itself was better. In the week before last, this index was number nine on our most volatile counters list based on statistical beta that we maintain in-house. It slipped one notch to number 10. Sure enough, just like the bank nifty, uh, the volatility was marginally lower, but the individual stock volatility rose faster. Last week, I advocated an uh, estimated range between 19,625 on the upside and 18,850 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I estimate a range between 19,800 on the upside and 19,050 on the downside. Here again, the range is tight because the base effect is small. Here again, please refer to our daily, weekly and monthly pivots, which are free on our Telegram channel. And these will help you whether you're a futures and option trader, option buyer or seller irrespective. Friends, I now come to the last uh, statistical bit of uh, data where I gauge the retail risk appetite based on their footprint of where they have contributed what amount of turnover. What you're seeing is that the index futures turnover, which is shown as a blue line, has fallen one basis point. The stock futures turnover has also fallen by one basis point. It is shown as a red line. 
and the higher risk, higher uh, capital requirement segment, which is futures, saw, saw lower turnover. That means risk appetite was lower last week. Now, where index options are concerned, the, the uh, turnover contribution fell by six basis points and that's shown as a green line. Stock options, which are now uh, showing a gain of eight basis points and as a purple line, shows that the only uh, risk taking that was displayed by a retail uh, segment was in the stock options segment. Compared to futures, options are cheaper uh, in terms of capital outlay and in terms of volatility. And therefore, uh, uh, the bulls did display a little bit, little bit, a very mild bit of uh, risk taking, but in the lower risk segment of the market. Now, friends, I come to the last segment wherein I share my uh, trading blueprint uh, with my online family. Last week, I remember I mentioned um, oil and gas look precariously poised and I was very bearish on them. I was proved right and how. Uh, please uh, join me on our free telegram channel where I post a lot of stuff uh, uh, about uh, the market directions and uh, uh, you could gain some insights from there. I told you that I'm bearish for a reason and I'm sharing the reason for you. It was uh, the DCA analysis uh, of uh, the uh, oil and gas uh, futures and I was optimistic on equities saying that the markets are discounting the Israel war based on the market wide position limits that were rising fast. And uh, uh, I was also bullish on oil marketing companies because oil prices were lower and you're seeing that in action. The other strategy that I uh, maintained was uh, a theta decay in uh, options in energy Metals I had advocated as temporarily uh, 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 showing a respite from the fall, but the fall has commenced again. Do refer to what I said about uh, pro-cyclical hysteriasis in industrial commodity prices. Now, in the coming week, what would I do? Theta decay in oil and gas, but this time around in December futures rather than November futures would be my go-to strategy. Interest rate sensitives will remain on our radar and on our gun sites, as will be public sector units and public sector banks. State elections in five states are underway, so volatility may be above average. Do remember that this uh, uh, is the beginning of a holiday season. So bid and offer spreads will be wider because turnover will fall. And you can't really uh, uh, trade like any regular uh, trading uh, phase in uh, the other times of the year because this is a festive season where trader participation will fall and you're going to be trading just as a token sake rather than seriously try and make huge amounts of money. In any case, the, uh, the wide bid and offer spreads will make it extremely difficult. Friends, I wish you a very, very happy Diwali in advance. I wish you a very joyous and prosperous coming new year. And thank you for being with me in another year uh, in my journey in uh, the public domain. Before I say goodbye in this video, a reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. In the comment segment, I would love to hear what you think about our videos and how they help you become better traders. And I would appreciate it if you could help me by sharing my videos with smart traders like yourselves and help me reach a bigger audience. Thank you for your patience and being with me in this video. Till we meet again in my next, this is Vijay Bambani signing off for now. Have a very profitable week ahead. Bye-bye.